and welcome to another episode of SCFG Live, Science Club for Girls Live. I'm Hannah with Science Club for Girls, and that was Mr. Music with your theme song. Very nice. Well, I'm so glad that you could join us again. We are on a, our 14th episode. It's insane. We've done so much science together over these last 14 episodes, and I'm so excited to do more in the future. Now, last week, we talked all about plants. We learned that plants make their own energy through a process called photosynthesis. They need three really important ingredients to go through this process. It is carbon dioxide. They also need water and sunlight. We figured this out through doing experimentation and talking to experts. Now, I have a cool fact to share with you about plants. There are actually some plants that do eat things. Now, they eat things to get nutrients because they often live in places with really nutrient poor soil. They still go through photosynthesis to get their energy, but they eat things to get those nutrients. These are called carnivorous plants. Easy to remember because carnivores eat meat, like lions and sometimes humans too. Now there are two really cool carnivorous plants I wanna introduce you to. The first one is a Venus flytrap. Venus flytraps are really cool because they eat small insects by trapping them in their trap-like leaves. What happens is a small insect will go into that little trap and it will hit little teeny hairs inside the Venus flytrap. When two hairs are hit in a row, the trap closes and gets the insect. Let's take a look at a Venus flytrap in action. Now, there's another cool carnivorous plant I want to introduce you to, and that's what's called a pitcher plant. Pitcher plants have these pitcher-like leaves that have digestive fluids on the inside. That helps to digest any little insects that go inside. Sometimes pitcher plants are big enough to actually be able to digest things like small rodents and even frogs. Now, it's important to note that carnivorous plants and non-carnivorous plants both need water in order to grow, to go through the process of photosynthesis. And that's why it's important for we as humans to track rainfall and weather. In fact, there are actually people that track rainfall for a living, and they're called meteorologists. Now, before we jump in and become meteorologists, let's talk about what is weather in the first place. Weather is a description of what's happening in our atmosphere or in our air at a certain moment and in a certain place. If you take a look at the hourly forecast on your phone or on your computer or on the TV, it will often tell you what today's weather is. There are a couple of different components of weather. The first, temperature, how hot or cold something is. The second is wind, how the air is moving across Earth's surface. The third, precipitation. Is there rain, snow, sleet, or other types of rain falling, or other types of water falling from the sky? And the last part of weather is humidity. How much water vapor or moisture is in the air? On really humid days, if you step outside, it'll actually feel kind of like wet and heavy in the air. Today, we're gonna focus on two components of weather, temperature and precipitation. Let's start with the first one, temperature. In order to measure temperature, you need something called a thermometer. Today, we're actually gonna be able to make our very own thermometers. Let's get started. Okay, to make a thermometer, you're gonna need a few different ingredients. The first one is a small little container. You can use a small bottle or a jar. You'll also need some rubbing alcohol. Now, rubbing alcohol is a chemical, so it's helpful to have an adult nearby to supervise you when you're using this. You'll also want some food coloring, a straw, a ruler, a Sharpie, some clay, and a pipette. I think that's it. We'll see if we forgot anything. Okay, first step, you need to fill your jar halfway full with rubbing alcohol. Again, 
See if you can get a parent nearby to supervise you. Do, do, do. About halfway full should be good. Cool. That should be enough. All right. Next, you're going to want to add some food coloring. Two or three drops should be good. There we go. Mix it up. You can use your straw, actually, to give it a little mix. All right. Now time to prepare the straw. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to mark on the straw every half centimeter using a ruler and a Sharpie. I'll show you this with a couple of markings, and then I've actually already done one myself. All right. So every half centimeter, you're going to want to mark with your straw. So I will mark here and here and here and keep going until your straw looks something like this. Okay. Now, time to prepare the clay. You're gonna wanna like kinda roll the clay out, adding a little bit of heat from your hands to make it easy to work with. Roll it into a ball like so, and then flatten it on the ground with your palm. Cool. Stick your hole, or stick your straw, through the middle of your clay. Like that. Now, if you get any clay at the end, you're going to want to remove that using, you could use your pipette or you could use a, um, a pencil. You could also just cut off the end of the straw like that. All right, now it's time to put our straw in the jar. Before you do that, though, take a little bit of liquid into your pipette. Squeeze your pipette, stick it in the bottle, and then release. This will cause the liquid to go all the way up into the pipette. Nice. Just like that. Okay. Now time to stick your straw into your bottle. You're going to want to put it down such that the straw starts to touch the liquid and then use your clay to create a seal. You want to make sure that no air escapes from your bottle. Great. All right. Now, use your pipette to squeeze some of that liquid into the straw, just until you can start to see the liquid above the clay, like that. Cool, and now we have our thermometer. Now, the level at which the liquid's at right now is room temperature. I wanna mark that so when I change the temperature, I can see how it changes in my thermometer. Use a different colored Sharpie to mark room temperature. I'll use a pink Sharpie. Okay, now I wanna change the temperature. To do that, I'm gonna place my thermometer in a bath of ice water. Before I do that though, it's time to make a prediction. Now, I have to tell you something. Dr. Marbles is away today. He's on a really busy and crazy vacation, but he said, don't worry, I'm sending you an assistant. So, let's bring in our assistant, Prediction Puppy! Hey, Prediction Puppy! How are you? It's good to see you. Okay, Prediction Puppy, what do you think will happen when I put my thermometer into my ice bath? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Oh, thanks, Prediction Puppy. Bye. Prediction Puppy said he thinks the level of the liquid is going to change in my thermometer when I put it in the ice bath. He's so smart. Let's go ahead and try it out. Watch closely to the liquid as I put it in my ice bath. Crazy. Prediction Puppy was right. The level of the liquid in my thermometer changed. So colder? and the liquid started to go down in my thermometer. Okay, now I wanna see what will happen when I put my thermometer in a bath of warm water. Remember, there's room temperature, and down here is the cold liquid, so let's see what happens when I put it in warm liquid. Here we go. It's passing room temperature, because this water is definitely warmer than room temperature. And it's going up, 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 up. Oh my gosh, really cool. Okay, 
So what's happening here? What is the science behind our thermometer? Well, it's something called thermal expansion and contraction. When things start to heat up, the molecules start to spread out and get bigger, taking up more space. When things cool down, the molecules start to get closer together. So when it expands, that liquid starts to rise, rise, rise in our tube. And then when it cools down, it starts to go down, down, down in our tube. Really cool. Now, temperature is a really important component of weather, and it actually has a really big effect on our second component we're going to learn about next, which is precipitation. Precipitation is any kind of water that falls from the sky. That could be rain, snow, sleet, or hail. And that precipitation falls from clouds. On our very first episode, we actually created a cloud in a jar. We turned water, liquid water, into water vapor, that gas form of water. We then cooled it down by hitting a uh, tray of ice and turned it back into those liquid droplets. Those liquid droplets came together and formed a cloud. Now, how exactly does that cloud then precipitate? In our second experiment, we'll find out. For this experiment, you're gonna need a jar filled about halfway full with water, some shaving cream, some food coloring, and a pipette, or you can also use um, a spoon. Okay, so time to get started. First thing is fill your jar halfway full with water. Then use your shaving cream to cover the top of the jar, forming a cloud. Nice. You can use your hand a little bit to spread it out if you'd like, but that looks pretty much like a cloud to me. Okay, now in a separate container, combine water and food coloring, like so. I've used blue food coloring, but you can use whatever kind you want. Here's the fun part. Start to pipette the food coloring on top of your cloud, and let's see what happens. Do, do, do. Cool. Nothing is happening right now because it looks like my cloud is absorbing some of that food coloring. But let's keep adding and see what happens. Add a little bit more. Hmm. I'm starting to see some food coloring entering my water at the bottom. Let's add a little bit more. Yeah, take a look at that. My food coloring is starting to drip down into my water. It looks like it became kind of too heavy for the cloud and now is starting to head into my water. Let's add a little bit more. This looks like it's kind of precipitating. Really cool. That's exactly what happens up in our atmosphere as well. When clouds become too heavy and too full, filled with those water droplets, they start to release the water droplets down to our Earth's surface. Now, those water droplets will either fall as rain or snow or sleet or hail, depending on the temperature. If it's below freezing, below 32 degrees, it will fall as snow or hail. If it's above 32 degrees, still in that liquid phase, it will fall as rain. Pretty cool. All right, now there's so much we could experiment with weather, but we can't do all of it today. So I actually had a chance to sit down with a meteorologist, not a meteorologist, a climate scientist, sorry, someone who studies climate and the environment, and ask her a little bit more about what her work is. Let's go ahead and take a look at my conversation with Dr. Mariana Lins. Um, so I'm so happy that Dr. Mariana Linz can join us today on today's episode. Thank you so much for coming. It's great to have you. Thank you so much for having me. Awesome. Well, why don't you start off by just introducing yourself and telling us a little bit more about what you do and how you're related to Science Club for Girls. Of course. So I'm a professor at Harvard University. I'm an assistant professor in the School of Engineering and Applied Sciences and the Department of Earth and Planetary Sciences. And I'm a climate scientist. So my research is about weather and climate and the ocean 
uh, volunteered as a mentor at King Open, um, which is my relation with Science Club for Girls. Um, great. So I actually noticed there that you mentioned weather and climate. Can you actually tell us how those things are different? Yeah, absolutely. So I think the main thing to think about in terms of the difference between weather and climate is the time on which it occurs. So weather is, is it gonna be hot tomorrow? Climate is more, is it gonna be hot this summer and next summer? So in terms of your climate forecast, that's a totally separate time scale from your 10 day weather forecast. That's the real difference is weather is specific to the day and climate is really a sort of average picture, an overall picture of what the weather is doing over a certain time scale. Cool. That's really helpful. Thank you for clarifying that. Um, and I'm curious, why is it even important to study these things in the first place? Why is it important to study and record weather? Why is it important to make these predictions about climate? Um, yeah, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, absolutely. So um, weather impacts people's lives. I mean, both day to day, just do you take an umbrella? Um, verse, and also, do you evacuate from the hurricane um, or from the wildfires? I think it's very important uh, for both simple, you know, day-to-day -day decisions and also large-scale decisions that affect many people um, and cause and disasters. Really, in terms of why it's important to study climate, it's essentially because of the weather because the weather impacts so much of what we do, it'd be good to know if every September starting in 2030, it's gonna be 10 degrees warmer. I mean, hopefully it's not, but like, if we knew that that was the case, we could prepare for that. Awesome. Yeah, really important too, because we wanna be prepared for any like natural disasters or any dramatic changes in weather too. Um, great. I'm curious how you actually got interested in science and. STEM and weather in the first place. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, so I guess I've always been interested in science. I, uh, I had a really wonderful fifth grade science teacher um, who pushed me so hard. You know, I was kind of like showing up and not really caring that much. And she's like, you can do better. And I'm gonna grade you like you can do better. She really pushed me. And that was fun because she pushed me to do stuff that um, I wouldn't necessarily have tried. And she pushed me to learn things that I wouldn't necessarily have learned. And I found that really fun. I liked learning new things and different things. Science, I feel like is really wonderful for me. The feeling of knowing something that is new, like, it's not something you learn in school. You learn something totally new that no one else knows right now. It's just like you. And that's really fun to discover something totally new. Um, great, and then my last question is, if you have any advice for all of our young viewers who are watching today. I think my main advice is to keep trying. Persistence is huge, you know? Science is sometimes portrayed as this lone person, you know, thinking up brilliant ideas, you know, with their hair coming out of their, you know. <laughs> um, but science is really a collaborative effort and there's a lot of failure before you succeed. And recognizing that you're gonna fail a lot, but the success is worth it. Um, that's really a huge part of science. And so just that persistence, just keep going. You can do it, just keep going, um, is so critical to doing something where you're discovering something new. That's awesome. Cool, great advice to give, really awesome advice. Well, thank you so much again, Dr. Mariana Linz, for having, um, for taking the time to be on our show and telling us more about what you do and your advice. It was, it was so great to have you. Um, and I hope to have you again soon.
Yeah, thank you, Hannah. Interesting. Mariana talked a lot about her work and why she's so interested in tracking weather and climate and how important it is because we need to make those predictions and be prepared for how climate's going to change over time. She also said that she loves studying weather and climate because it's always changing. You never know what to expect and there's always something new to learn. She was inspired by her fifth grade teacher too to get into science because her fifth grade teacher kept pushing her to do more and more challenging things and really got her inspired to become a scientist. Mariana is also a mentor with Science Club for Girls, so it's great to have her in our community. It was so great to have you on another episode of SCFG Live. All right, we'll see you in two weeks. We're off next week, but we'll be back in two weeks. Looking forward to seeing you guys then. Bye.